Assalamu alaikum kids. Inshallah in this video we'll take a look at a couple of things. The first one is on how to store values. Now for students attending school it's going to be pretty useful because again a lot of your structured questions are such that they have several parts where a value calculated early may be used in later parts. For SAT students it's not going to be much useful. All right because SAT questions are generally not structured that way where one value is used in another question. Very rare to see those types of questions. But just for the sake of it, all you need to know is, let's say for example, you've got a value, which is three divided by eight. All right, the value three divided by eight, let's say for example, you found in part A, that was three divided by eight. If I'm not wrong, the decimal value should be 0 0.375. Yeah, that's cool. Now, most of the students will round it up to become three zero point three eight. But again, like I said, you should not use approximated values. So what you are going to do is you're going to store this. All right, how are you going to store this? You can store this in any one of the seven variables given to you by the calculator. You've got A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, and M. To store this value, you essentially are going to press the store button. All right, so store. And then let's say for example, this is part A. So you, you'd want to store it in A, even though you can store it in X, but just to be able to recall which variable you stored your value into, if you're solving part A, plug the value in A. If you're solving part B, store the value in B, so on and so forth. So I press the store button and then I press A. Now what this calculator does now is that it stores the value in A. So let's say for example, now later in part D, let's say for example. So part D requires me to do what? It requires me to multiply the value of part A into 10. So all I'm going to do is what? I'm going to press alpha and A. That essentially recalls the value of A that I stored earlier. I multiply it with 10 and that essentially gives me the value 15 over four. So instead of having to do three upon eight into four, or sorry, rather 10, but again, because of the exam pressure, there is a chance that you might actually forget what you did in A. So having stored the value will essentially be useful as you won't have to go back and solve A again. If I press the SD button, SD, like I said earlier, helps you to calculate or helps you to convert between decimal and fraction values. 0 0.375 multiplied by 10 is going to give me 3.75. So that's cool. All right. So you can use this option in many different ways. Well, it's going to be quite helpful. Now, the next thing that we are going to discuss is essentially finding out the X and the Y intercepts of a line using a calculator. Now, this right here is something that you should practice first doing both ways. You should practice doing manually and you should practice doing it using a calculator. You need to figure out for your own self whether you should use a calculator to solve a question like this or you should just do it manually, whichever one's faster for you, whichever one works for you better, you should go with that. Now, how do you use a calculator to figure that out? Very simple. So you've got to type in this equation right here into the calculator, all right? Just on the normal screen, press alpha no sorry not alpha first so you go with three x alpha and x that gives me three x minus five alpha and y that gives me y and then you have an equals to sign so alpha and then calc is going to give me this these red signs are the ones that are going to be printed when you press alpha so alpha and then pressing calc will give me this red sign right here so if that's equals to it's going to press equals to if it's a then it's going to be a all right, so I have this equation right here, 3x minus 5i equals to how much? Equals to 15. Now, to be able to figure out the x-intercept, what I need to do, I need to plug in y equals 0. On the x-intercept, y equals 0. On the y-intercept, x equals to 0. So finding x and y-intercepts of a line, so x and 0 is the x-intercept, 0 and y is the y-intercept. So let's say, for example, we take this first line right here. We have written the equation already on the screen of the calculator. And I want to plug in y equals 0. So what am I going to do? This time, I'm not going to press calc. I'm going to press shift and calc. Why? Because my equation right here has two unknowns. Now, going up and down is going to allow me to alternate between the values of x and y. 
to find the value of x, I'm going to have to plug in y equals 0. So that's what I do. I plug in y equals 0. I press 0 and then I press the equals to sign. That sets the value of y at 0. Now, because I want to figure out x, I'm going to press up. I'm going to go to x. Now, even though it says that the value of x is 0 0.04, it's really not. It's from a previous problem that we just did. And when you press equals to again over here, it essentially solves this equation for x. Now, let's do that manually. All right. So if you want to figure out the value of x or the y, sorry, the x-intercept, you're going to have to plug in y equals 0. You're going to get 3x minus 5 times 0 equals 15. You're going to get 3x equals 15. And you're going to get x equals 5. All right. Now, I'm not saying that this right here is a technique that you can exclusively and only use to figure out the x and the y intercepts. Being able to solve equation like this on a calculator is going to be very helpful in various different scenarios. This is just one of the scenarios that uses this application of solving an equation in a calculator. All right, so let's say for example, so we figured out what the value of x was or we figured out what the x-intercept was. Now I want to figure out what the y-intercept is. So I press shift and calc again. This time, because I want to figure out the y-intercept where x is 0, so I press 0 and equals to. That essentially sets the value of x as 0. Press the down button. And because you want to figure out the value of y, instead of plugging in any value, you press equals to one y. And automatically it tells you that, okay, when x is equal to zero, y should be equals to minus three. And that is going to be your y-intercept, zero and minus three. All right. So I hope that this made sense. Let's try another one. Let's try to find out the value of x at y is equals to three. So like I said, it does not only work with the x and the y intercepts. Let's say, for example, you want to figure out what the value of x is at y equals 3. Let's say we go with this equation right here. So let's go with this equation. So 2x, so 2, so we press 2, and then x, so that should be alpha, and then x plus 10 is equals to, so is equals to is alpha and then calc, that gets me the equal sign, and then y. Now, I want to figure out the value of x at y equals 3, so I'm going to press shift calc, that brings me to the equation solver. I want to figure out the value of x at y equals 3, so again, I want to figure out x, so I'm going to have to plug in first the value of y equals 3, it brought me to this. So, Pressing shift and calc brings me to the value of x. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to press down. That gets me the value of y. I'm going to plug in y as 3 and press equals to. That sets the value of y at 3. Now, I'm not going to press equals to again. Why? Because if I press the equals to again and this screen right here, it's going to solve for the value of y. I don't want that. I want to solve for the value of x. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to press the up button. That brings me to x. Now, even though, like I said before, it says x equals 0, but it's really not. I press equals to again. It's solved for the value of x. You can try this on your own manually as well. The value of x at y is equals to 3 should be 3.5. Let's try this. 2x is equals to 10. Sorry, 2x plus 10 is equals to how much? Is equals to y3. And then you're going to get what? You're going to get 2x is equals to minus 7. And then x should be equals to negative 7 upon 2, which is equals to minus 3.5. All right. So essentially, you can use the calculator this way to solve various different types of problems where you need to plug in values again and again and again. All right. So again, try solving these questions right here these questions right here you have on the screen. Try solving these both manually and with the calculator so you get an idea of which you should, which one should you choose, whether you should choose to do it manually or whether you should choose the calculator to do this for you. Alrighty, kids. I hope that this series of videos was helpful. If there is anything else you want to calculate, please write them on the comments. If you want to figure out how to use a calculator to do other stuff, so write it down in the comments and inshallah i'll make videos on that as well 
that's it for this one inshallah i'll see you in the next video bars out